so we have talked about radiation impedance for a sphere uh, let's look at very quickly radiation impedance for an open tube so ideally p is exactly equal to 0 right in reality you can say that it's approximately equal to 0 because that change to 0 it happens over some finite distance so this is an open tube now my impedance i know is equal to p over u so if p is very is approximately equal to 0 i can say that z is approximately equal to 0 also what does that physically mean what it means is that when sound is traveling here then in case of sphere we saw that for a wide range of frequencies it's difficult to dissipate power into free air from a spherical source because of that psi factor and psi becomes significantly large in that case. Do you remember that discussion? Because of the power factor, power fa the value of power factor is significant at high frequencies and also at low frequencies in case of a pulsating sphere. So at low frequencies you need very high energy to pump uh, small amounts of energy into free air and at also high frequencies you need large mm -hmm. amounts of input energy to pump these things. But in case of an open tube uh, given that z is approximately equal to 0 uh, it is relatively uh, easier to pump energy at all frequencies into free air. So if I have a vibrating piston here it is relatively less difficult or easier to pump energy into free air. So that is there. So essentially when we construct systems which have to produce sound then you want to ensure that the radiating impedance of that system is as low as possible and also the overall power factor of that system. The closer it is to you know psi being equal to 0 the closer is it equal to that value the better it is the more efficient that system is. If you want to have stronger attenuation of sound which is the inverse problem then you will like to construct systems which are in the other direction. So that you like to increase the radiation impedance because that will essentially mean that less energy will get dumped into the environment and will be hurt by individuals. So there are several topologies uh, to which sound gets propagated into the air. A very common topology is that you have an infinite baffle or a wall you can call and then here I have a diaphragm or a flat surface which is moving back and forth especially in some of the older sound systems you would see very big boxes which will be having one speaker which is moving back and forth essentially it acts like as an infinite infinite baffle <coughs> because the stiffness of the box is very low. So this is one topology another topology which we have talked about is UV sphere which is pulsating mm -hmm. growing and contracting that also emits energy into air this is another third topology right and a uh, fourth topology could be a plain circular piston without any baffle. So this is gone then how does it emit sound. So there are different approaches. So what we will talk is a little bit more about uh, this particular topology what we call plane circular piston in infinite baffle. 
सो दिस इज माई इन्फिनेट बैफिल and this is my plane circular piston the radius of this piston could be uh, r not so again what we are trying to get an understanding is that as this piston is moving back and forth it has a certain volume velocity it generates some pressure how does all that energy gets dumped into here and that is quantified through this number called uh, radiation impedance so this problem uh, you can develop some finite element models do some numerical experiments and after a good amount of computational modeling people have come up with fairly standard values so for a for a plane circular piston in infinite baffle the radiation impedance looks something like this it's a bunch of capa one capacitor two resistors in series and in and an in and an inductor and this is for impedance models for mobility model the circuit looks now that you understand the idea of a dual so it looks something like this the values of these elements have been computed and uh, so yeah, the value of ra1 is 0.1404 times rho not c over r not square ra2 is what happened to my stylus So R A one is zero point one four one rho c over R naught square. R A two is uh, this particular expression. M A is zero point two seven rho naught over R naught, and C A, another constant, is five point nine four R naught cube over rho naught c square. and because now we are talking about specific constants 0.14 you know so these relations are good to the extent we are in si units so r not has to be in meters rho not c has to be rho not is density so it's kg over cubic meters c which is velocity of air has to be meters per second otherwise these relations have to be adjusted and r a1 lower case r a1 and lower case r a2 are basically just inverses of upper case values so if you have a pulsating membrane fixed in a big on a big surface and air from back side is disconnected with air from the other side, from your room then if you use this model then it will fairly accurately capture the radiation impedance of that membrane 
so what we will do is we will look at it and so this is mobility model now what we will do is we will see what are the characteristics of this particular model at low frequencies and at high frequencies what does this mean physically so if i am in very high frequency land when omega is large then well, let's see what's going to happen so when omega is large ma becomes extremely large so very little current goes through here so i can drop this out so the current has choice between going through ra1 or through this capacitive element at very high frequencies the impedance offered by capacitor will become very low so current will prefer to go from ca and then it goes through R, ra2 so my equivalent circuit at very high frequencies becomes so my this is my potential difference p and the current is volume velocity and this is r a2 so what this shows is that when i have high frequencies a piston mounted on an infinite baffle behaves like a purely resistive circuit so the first thing is that the inefficiencies associated with that power factor they become minimized at high frequencies so i don't have any inductive or capacitive element which alter the phase phase that is one thing the other thing is that in the near field again what this shows is that it the transmission of sound happens in kind of like a beam because this impedance is something very similar in nature qualitative nature to plane waves as they are moving through tubes open tubes in fluid right if you remember the impedance in a open tube is purely resistive thing and it does not attenuate in strength as you move forward the strength of sound as it moves in an infinitely long tube it does not decay with uh, traveling what this shows is that it's the same thing happening here also so what that means is that at high frequencies the behavior of sound is like a beam it travels like a ray of light at high frequencies this is what it means physically now of course when you go away from the source when you are in far field then it again starts to radiate but for a fairly good amount of distance sound moves like beam at high frequency this is the physical understanding so that is case 1 case 2 happens what if omega is low omega is small so what happens let's look at this circuit again when omega is small i can fairly easily drop this term out ca right so i what i have left what i am left with is ma and ra1 and ra2 at extremely low frequencies between ra1 and ra2 and this mass uh, it will still prefer the inductive Indu part so in a little more general sense i can say that my circuit will be something like this so for extremely low frequencies current will still like to go through ma which means that for very low frequencies the dissipation of power through an infinite baffle will be very less energy will go into the system back into the system it will not get dissipated so it is very difficult to dissipate for very low frequencies sound into free air using an infinite baffle 
all what you are seeing is that different approaches of dissipating low frequency sound into medium is a not an easy thing this uh, efficiently doing the same thing efficiently is not easy similarly attenuating low frequency noise is not easy you will see later in the future. so what we will do is we will sir, yeah sir in first case so why you need to consider capacitor in the first case yes. so you understand why i dropped out ma right at high frequencies now at high frequencies capacitance the in the uh, impedance offered by capacitance will be virtually zero because it's 1 over s times ca it will be there but at high frequency the impact of that negative the magnitude with respect to r2 yes with respect to r2 what i mean i can keep on increasing the frequency and i will hit a number where it will be small enough compared to so what that crossover point is will depend on the ratio of r2 and ca right so you have to figure that out but at high frequencies ca you can ignore it and replace it by a short so can you repeat the point that you mentioned about uh, attenuation of low frequency sounds and the other equivalent in making the sound at high frequency yeah what we have seen is that when we try to dissipate sound through some of these sources into free air what we are seeing again here is that at very low frequencies ma dominates all the current goes through ma which means that the dissipation of power is less so all what happens is energy goes in goes back and forth into the system uh, we had seen earlier that the average power dissipated in general is essentially dependent on the r term if very low energy is going through r the energy dissipated into the sound uh, into the into free air will be very less that's what i'm saying so what we will also do is here we will compare the efficiency of this system for low frequency with a spherical source is it is a spherical source easy to dissipate power into free air or is it easier to do it using an infinite baffle what will that's what we will do so this is for infinite baffle now for a spherical source we had developed a relation something like this the impedance was this is the radiation impedance for spherical source okay so if the size of the source both the sources are same that is ro is same uh, then look at let's look at the numbers so we'll construct a small matrix spherical source and the other column could be infinite baffle and what i will do is i list r and l so again the circuits looks very similar you have a resistor and an inductor here in parallel same thing in case of a spherical source all we will be doing is comparing the magnitudes of these elements and see how they look like so in case of spherical source the resistive value was z not over a that equals over 4 pi r not square is 0.084 rho c over r square that's my number 0.084 in case of infinite baffle it is 0.458 rho c over 
rho naught c over r square okay the inductive value will be z naught r naught over 4 pi r naught square and if i do the math it comes approximately to 0.84 Rho naught over R naught. I just assume pi to be three. So it, it comes close to 0.084, maybe 0.083. In this case, it comes to 0.27 rho naught over R naught. Okay. So what do you see when you look at these numbers? that the impedance offered by a spherical source is substantially less for the same size of the object substantially less than that offered by source of sound mounted on a baffle so a spherical source by itself is not a very efficient way to disseminate sound into air at low frequencies an infinite baffle is even poorer approach of disseminating sound at low frequencies into the system this is the because your r is less your l is less for a spherical source your baffle uh, numbers are significantly higher five times or more so we have talked about spherical <coughs> sources we have talked about radiation impedance of a tube at the end of it so now we will very quickly consider radiation impedance for a plain circular disk in free air so it moves back and forth so for low frequencies i'll very quickly give the impedance circuit looks something like this yeah so this is my impedance model so my across variable is pressure here my through variable is pressure and across variable is volume velocity and r is 0.019 okay r square times density times omega over c cube and m1 oh i'm sorry mm equals 0.271 times rho naught over r naught and in this case r equals 0.2 61 omega square R not four over rho not c two. You see that things start getting more and more complicated. So you'll find a more exhaustive list of some of different geometries and what uh, each of these geometries have uh, for their radiation impedance in uh, a book like Berenet, which is the prescribed test for this course, reference test. and for high frequencies the circuit looks simply like this where r equals to rho not c 
over pi r naught square and this is this is valid for which model impedance of mobility which one impedance so if i have to use for high frequency something similar for mobility what will i do <coughs> R will get replaced by its inverse. Okay. So, what we will do is one example and see how radiation impedance improves uh, our prediction of some of the acoustic properties of systems. So, let us consider a bottle. This is actually a physical bottle which I measured. So, it has two parts, the badly built bottle. So, there is a volume here, this length is L 1, uh, let us call it L 2, this length is L 1. Its mouth has a diameter of 2 times r 1 okay. and the volume has a diameter of 2 times r 2. So, what I would like to know is what is the natural frequency of this bottle. This is the volume is like a stiffness member and the open tube on top of it is like a mass right. So, it is kind of a mass spring system and I am I like to see how good my model is in terms of predicting. So, we will put some numbers L 1 equals 6.7 cm, R 1 equals 1.43 centimeters, volume of the lower portion is 530 times 10 to the power of minus 6 cubic meters. I mean I can also find L 2 is P naught over pi R 2 square. So, first thing I will check is that is my all these lengths significantly smaller than what number lambda over 2 pi right. So, L 1 has to be less than lambda over 2 pi, which gives me a uh, frequency number corresponding to 819 hertz. Is everyone sure how to jump from lambda to f? Right. So, what this means is that if I am significantly below in frequency from 819 hertz, then if I approximate my tube which is L 1 long as an acoustic mass I will be ok that is what it means. Similarly, L 2 has to be less than lambda over 2 pi which means frequency equals 365 hertz. So, if using this uh, mass spring approach if my resonance exceeds 365 hertz then my model is not valid basically that is what it means. So, now we will find what is the frequency of this system. So, if I construct an impedance model pressure that is my m m c no I am sorry it is acoustic mass. So, m a we have seen from earlier lectures and discussions is rho naught l over pi r naught square and my capacitance value 
is or acoustic stiffness is V naught over rho naught C square. So my Z bottle is S times MA plus 1 over S times CA. So, if I plot its poles and zeros, I have a pole at zero and uh, yeah, a, a pole at origin, a pole at origin, and I have two zeros. Symmetrically along the imaginary axis, and this value is 1 over MACA. When I do the math and I plug in all the numbers, my first estimate on frequency resonance F0 comes to be 210 hertz. And when I actually did the measurement, so FM, it was 233 hertz. I should have shown this here. So, this is clearly it is off. And in terms of ex, uh, estimation on frequencies, they should not be off by this much of an amount. Frequency uh, uh, estimates come fairly close to reality. So, next we will see how we can improve our model to get a better and closer estimate. So, what we will do is I went to this book Berenek and I said ok, there is this tube I have just modeled it, the, modeled it as a pure mass element, okay. but there is some radiation this is a tube, but there it may be seeing some radiation impedance here because it is dissipating sound into free air. So, what is that value? So, once I do that my refined circuit becomes something like this. So, I still have my this is M A which we have already calculated this is and then I put so the extra elements based on more rigorous computational modeling are these terms R1 and M1, where R1 is 0.479 rho C over R naught square and M 1 is 0 0.195 rho naught over R naught. So, putting the values of R and everything in this I get R 1 equals 953 times 10 to the power of 3 Newton second over meter 5 and M 1 is 19 times 10 to the power of 3 something like this. So, for low frequencies clearly R 1 is very large compared to M 1. Okay, so, I have to make correction here this is omega M 1 omega m 1 for I just chose a small number 190 hertz I said 190 is fairly close to 230. So, I wanted to get an estimate that in the neighborhood of resonance which term is dominating R 1 or omega m 1. So, what I am seeing is that in the neighborhood of resonance this is very small this is very large these are in parallel. So, what that means is I can drop R 1 out at around 190 200 hertz. So, then my approximation of this circuit becomes M 
एम ए एम वन सी आई स्टिल है प्रेशर तो आई गेट दिस चेयरमैन इज एवरीवन कंफर्टेबल विद व्हाई आई ड्रॉप द आर टर्म सो आई नो एम वन आई नो एम ए आई नो सी so my second i try to get different estimate so my second frequency estimate natural frequency estimate came to be what was it 219 so i was able to improve my estimate from 210 by another 10 hertz or so so that is how close i got to the actual number after that i did not bother So what this shows is that incorporation of radiation impedance in your actual model will help you get a better picture of how the circuit is going to be behave because the outside space does impede flow of sound as sound emanates from a vibrating member or a tube or whatever so some of these elements have to be captured in your circuit analysis so that is all i wanted to talk about today starting next lecture we'll start talking about more detailed analysis of the whole speakers microphones and so on see what they show us